What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and just in time for the launch of Operation Void Edge, I want to take you over the changes to the reworked Oregon map that is coming out this season. If you've been playing the map on the test server for the last three weeks, you will probably already know it to a certain degree, but getting the top-down view might still be interesting, so do feel free to stick around if you like. We will begin our tour in the basement all the way in the south, so towards the front door where the staircase comes down, because this is a great anchor point that is present in both the old map and the new rework. As you can see, the stairs have been extended to the south a little, and there is now a bulletproof wall that runs all the way along the side. The laundry storage and laundry room are very similar in terms of their footprint compared to before, but the added doorway between the two rooms separates them far more than before. The well-known hatch into the laundry room from the lobby above has been moved to the southeast and will now drop down into the laundry storage rather than the laundry room. At the top of the screen, you can easily recognize the supply closet and supply room, and the basement corridor is also virtually unchanged there, apart from the brand new freezer tunnel that leads off to the west and then comes up underneath the white stairs. More rotation options for defenders, more attack avenues for the attackers. We'll get to these stairs later once we tackle the first floor. For now, let's stick to the basement and head north. As I mentioned, the storage room stays essentially the same except for the northwestern corner, which used to be a double 90 degree bend in the corridor that has now been removed. Instead, the corridor runs straight up into the boiler room, which is now extended to the west. On the eastern side of the storage room is a brand new soft wall that leads through to the blue bunker, essentially an extension to the construction entrance. The hatch that comes down from the meeting hall into the electrical room is also unchanged here, but the second hatch to the corridor has been completely removed. This whole area in the north has been widened and opened up, although the basic layout to this section of the map is still very recognizable, and the stairs leading upward are exactly where they used to be. Now let's head up the big tower stairs, so we're now on the first floor and you can see the tower, meeting hall, kitchen and dining room. And the first thing that will jump out at you is how the overall floor layout looks very much the same as before from the top-down perspective, but there are a few little changes that do make this area quite different to play. The most obvious difference is that the rear stage area has been extended out to the west and there is now a brand new corridor take a shot every time Rogue says brand new leading over to the kitchen and because of this the former little pantry room has been incorporated into the kitchen and the soft wall to the meeting hall has been nudged to the south a little. A key difference you will notice in the meeting hall is that the ladder up to the attic is now gone. You won't be able to get up that way anymore and as for the kitchen, the door into the kitchen from the southern hallway has been blocked up. And apart from breaching your way in, the only ways of getting to the kitchen now are through the new corridor or through the dining hall where the doorway has also been moved. In terms of the hatches from above in this whole area, the attic over the meeting hall has been moved to the north a bit and the one into the kitchen pantry has moved over to the western side of the room instead. Let's move south a bit to the front door, and again, the first impression is that the general layout remains pretty much the same. The garage, lobby, classroom, hallway, both stairs, and the former toilet all keep their general footprint. A few of the props have been moved around or changed, most notably the annoying semi-cover wall in the garage is now a bit smaller and now offers solid cover instead of the semi-solid, semi-nothing cover that we used to have before. And that's not the only change to the garage because there is now also a hatch in the ceiling that connects to the armory above, we'll see that again once we go upstairs. As already mentioned, you can now see how the lobby hatch has moved and now there is also a brand new hatch in the security room which used to be the toilets. This is the hatch that leads down into the new freezer section. But that's already pretty much it here. Much more interesting are the changes in the western part of the building. The updates here are really deceptive because while a lot of the rooms might still be in pretty much the exact same places, what will throw you off for quite a while is how the movement flow around this whole area has been radically altered. As mentioned before, you can't get into the kitchen from the hallway anymore, that door is just gone, and if you follow the hallway through towards the west, once you reach the white stairs, movement will be very different from now on. 
Also note that the new doorway across from the security room leads to the stairs that go down to the freezer tunnel I mentioned earlier. But now back to the first floor corridor where here, instead of the double 90 degree bend and then a long straight passage all the way into small tower, there is now a doorway leading to a new corridor that can take you either to the right, into the dining room, or to the left around the shower room that has been moved slightly. The small tower itself has been extended both to the north and the south and now has a door that can lead into the dining room. And that's quite useful because the old dining room door that used to lead straight outside is now also blocked up. Fighting from the outside straight into an objective room is always a challenging experience for both teams, especially here on Oregon because of all of the nasty angles from the big tower threatening the attack. So getting rid of this door and instead inserting the small tower as a buffer room is probably a great move. One other thing you will also notice is that some of the windows in small tower are now also blocked off, again reducing the amount of fighting from the inside to the outside. The stairs in the small tower are still exactly where they were before and if we head up them, the landing of the office area is still the same but now with a brand new room added on. I feel that flanking from the small tower will be a bit more challenging for defenders in future because you can now only jump out through either the window in the south or the new window in the north. Smacking the east facing window and being able to shoot your opponent straight in the back is not going to be a thing anymore. The roof area outside is now also larger, has been flattened off and offers more cover for attackers to hold angles against big tower and the dorm main hall window. Speaking of which, as you can see here, the main dorm hall and kids dorm room stay pretty much the same as before with the exception of moving the main window and blocking up one of the kids windows. The small dorms have been changed into a games room, but other than that, that room as well as the master bedroom, walk-in closet and armory also remain very recognizable. The small difference in these rooms once again is the removal of access points to the outside. One of the windows to the master bedroom is now blocked up. And so all of the rooms in this area are essentially the same as before but playing the top floor will feel totally different because, and you can say this with me now, once again the movement flow has been changed by altering the hallway that used to connect all of these rooms. This hallway has essentially been extended to the north and subdivided so that we now have two new rooms instead. The dorm main hall keeps its old name but loses its window and the armory corridor now becomes the trophy room. Also attached to the north here is now an extension to the attic corridor which can be accessed through a door as well as the old breachable wall which is in a very similar place as before just a little bit further north and a new or dare I say brand new breachable wall into kids dorms. As for hatches there's only the one in kids dorm that has switched sides as I showed before and of course the new hatch in the corner of the armory. Onward to the north and the attic. No more ladder down to meeting and the formerly breachable floor has been mostly replaced with concrete apart from one small strip right at the north above the meeting hall stage. This is actually really valuable though because if you send a Roma up here, you can create sneaky angles onto the rear stage door, the stage itself or even all the way through into the first floor of the tower behind the stage. Another key change for the attic is the removal of the iconic but also highly frustrating slit window and instead there is now a regular window facing west. This doesn't really provide many great angles for defenders and won't allow rotations into the dorm's hall but you can make a quick dash up to the north for one of the tower windows if necessary. All in all though, I feel that this new window is much more useful for attackers because it provides a quick and easy way to get into the attic now. Getting from the attic directly into big tower will still require you to breach the soft wall but once through you will find that both the second and the third floor are exactly the same as before. Same size, same layout, same windows, just overall a bit brighter and prettier. One neat little change though is that it will be easier to access the beam from the third floor compared to what it used to be. Up until now you could basically vault over the railing anywhere and getting onto the beam required a little bit of care. Now in the new version of the map, your vaulting options have been restricted and it's now almost impossible to vault over and fall down. It can still happen if you're really careless but from now on the vaulting will be much easier and safer for sure.
If you head downstairs to the first floor of the tower, you will find that it pretty much mostly is the same as before. Same entry doors to the east and northwest. The only differences are that the sneaky little firing slit outside the east door has been removed and as with the lobby stairs earlier, the tower stairs wall has now also been made solid. And there is of course the brand new kitchen hallway. That's it as far as the layout and movement flow go, so now let's take a brief look at the bomb mode objectives. Three of these are virtually unchanged. Kids dorms main hall, kitchen dining, and laundry supply will be very familiar to you. Although of course your defensive setups and attack strategies will have to change somewhat to account for the changes in the hallways and access points. The only objective which is drastically different is the rear stage tower one. And by different, I mean that it will be simply moved because, let's face it, defending here has always been a minor nightmare. The new location for this objective will now be Meeting Kitchen instead, and with the changes in this area of the map, that should make for some interesting new gameplay. Whichever way this site pans out once the season is properly live, I think it's safe to say that it will most certainly be better than the tower objective we've had to deal with in the past. And that's it, a full top-down tour of the new Oregon map. Have you had a chance to play here yet? What are your thoughts on the new movement flow? Let me know in the comments below and with that, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode. Let's go!